The Miami Heat last season finished with the fifth seed, 44-29. and 29. They lost to the Lakers in the finals in six games. And this season, I think the pressure is on. They're not sneaking up on anybody this year. They're going. Everybody knows who they are. They're going to get everybody's best effort this year. And they re-signed Bam to a max extension, which was a great move. Five years, $163 million. They re-signed Goran Dragic. They re-signed Myers Leonard. Avery Bradley comes from L.A. Maurice Harkless comes from New York. But they lost guys, too. They lost Jay Crowder, Derek Jones Jr., Solomon Hill, which isn't really much of a loss. And then they added a guy in the draft in Precious Achiua who, with the 20th pick, who I think is a, is a good prospect. I, I really loved his game coming out of Memphis. And I think he's maybe might be a draft gem for the Miami Heat. I don't know how many minutes he's going to get this upcoming season. I think but, I think, but I think he can develop into a really good player. And he fits that mold of heat culture, what the heat want to do. And I, um, I'm under the, I, I, I like the pick. I feel like we're losing Crowder and Derek Jones Jr. I feel like that was a necessary pick because he can slide in. He, he played the four essentially at Memphis. And that was more of his role anyways, because he can't really shoot. He's athletic. He can, he's a cutter. He can get to the basket. He can do all that good stuff around the rim. So and he's very athletic too. Underrated defender too. He's, he's good though. I like him. I think, like you said, people aren't sleeping on Miami. They know how they are. People know how they are. And I think they're starting to game plan against him. I think Jimmy Butler is going to take a bit of a leap this year, another leap in terms of being that number one scorer. I think you're getting Tyler Hero back, who's we expect, we also expect to make a, a, a not an all star jump, but close to that all star range. I think Bam is going to come back and make a jump. It's going to be interesting to see because Miami's team was predicated on depth and they lost a lot. They lost a few pieces in this offseason. They didn't gain anything back. They kept thinking, they were going to get a big guy in trade, so now they don't. They have the same team. But I like this team going forward, and I think this is going to be still one of the best teams in the East. I think they're going to fight and battle for those top three seeds. But inevitably, I have them as a 4-5. Same thing as last year. I have them sliding in at 4-5. Highest thing goes 3, lowest 5. Yeah, I, I echo a lot of the same things that Riv just said and you said, Joel. I mean, this is a team that was probably one of the biggest surprises of last season, if not the biggest surprise. And it's thanks to the genius of Pat Riley, the Heat's incredible player development system. Jimmy Butler and even to a lesser extent, Goran Dragic being the spectacular leaders that they are. And, you know, I just I feel confident saying that their young guys and Bam, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, even Kendrick Nunn are going to continue to grow because that system is so fruitful. Jimmy Butler is not going to be a guy that's going to be lax in, in the offseason and let them rest on their laurels. He texted Goran Dragic and said, if you don't re-sign with the Heat, I know where you live. I'm going to come <laughs> and make you sign a contract. Like This guy wants to win at all, all, all costs, and he will tie you to his belt and drag you with him if that's what he has to, has to do. So I can guarantee you, I know for a fact all of these guys have a great relationship. You could read about it anywhere. You could see videos of them interacting. And so I know Jimmy was on those guys this offseason. They're going to come in hungry as ever after a tough loss last offseason. And I love the talent they have. I know they lost some depth and some important depth, especially in Jay Crowder and Derek Jones Jr. But I think that the signings of Avery Bradley and to a lesser extent, Mo Harkless, along with drafting Precious Achua, were great replacements for those missing pieces. So bringing back essentially the same team you had last year with a guy in Avery Bradley, who I see as an upgrade of the backup one slash two role. And then Mo Harkless, who I think can at least somewhat fill the shoes of Jay Crowder and Derek Jones Jr. on the wing. I think they had a, a really solid off season and they're bringing back a core. That's just hungry. They have some dogs and they have one of the most underrated coaches in all of basketball and Eric Spolcher. The guy's a championship head coach. I was glad to see him finally get his recognition this year and coming into the season. I, I think they're going to be another really a, a dangerous team. Like they were in the bubble. Jack, did your hair grow? It did. I haven't been able to get a haircut because I've been quarantined it's for two little, months. Uh, this is, man, the- man, stop talking about hair because we're talking about the Miami <laughs> Heat right now. But this is what I'm going to say. I think the starting lineup is there's four locks in it. Of course, Goran Dragic, Jimmy, Duncan Robinson. Maybe Tyler Hero size in there over Duncan. I'm not sure. Bam, but it's really that four spot. Who's going to start? Some say Precious, maybe Mo Harkless. 
You can slot an Iggy there. It you guys really think depends. Jimmy starts at the four? I don't know. That would be that. Maybe Tyler Hero starts at the two, Duncan at the three, Jimmy at the four. Maybe they go small. But I disagree with your point, Riv, about the depth. I think they have a lot of depth. Kendrick Nunn is still there. Tyler Hero, Avery Bradley, Eagle Dollar, Olenek, Myers Leonard, Achua. I don't even know how to say it, bro. But KZ Okpala, too, is there, like, a young guy. So they still have a lot of depth. I mean, they can go 10 to 11 deep on any given night. So they have a lot of depth. And, I mean, I think the question that's up in the air right now is is Pat Riley going to trade for James Harden? That's what everybody's wondering. You know, because yeah, I, I, it's funny because we had the same conversation when we talked about it for the Nets. And personally, I don't think that this is a team that should go out and trade for James Harden. And that it makes it seem like I don't think James Harden should end up anywhere. But I see the Heat as a team <laughs> that's where they can contend right now with what they have. And I just think that their position to be a top three, four team in the East for a decade to come. And I don't think that they're going to sell that off for a guy in James Harden who doesn't really fit what they're trying to do. So I don't they, think they no, make they the can't, move. They, they can contend. They can't win. They can't I win. Think they can. I, think, I think they can win the no, East. No, they can. I think in they can win the East. For a decade? You know, Jimmy Butler's 30. It's not about Jimmy Butler. It's about Bam, Tyler Hero, more. Duncan Robinson, Kendrick Nunn, KZ Akpala, who you mentioned, and they do a spectacular job drafting. Look, I think they can't they can't win a championship with this group. This year they can. I think that they could win the East, which is about really all you can ask for when you see that if you can make it out of the East, you can compete with any team that comes out of the West as as much as you can. I mean, the, the best Lakers, team in the, the league Lakers is in would, the West. The, La- the Lakers would beat the Heat. I think the Lakers would beat the Heat with James Harden anyway. Because who are you giving up? What, what the package would be, this is what I've heard. This is everything I've heard when discussing this. You'd give up Tyler Hero, which I'm fine with. Bam, which I'm not fine no, with. No, no, no. They would multiple not, picks. They would not give up Bam for Harden. If you could do it without giving up Bam, I might change my stance. But Bam out of bio, I love Jimmy Butler. And I think his role is very important to this team as a leader. But on court wise, Bam Adebayo is the most important piece to this team, and it's something that we've spoken about with almost every team, especially the Celtics. They have a guy in Bam who is one of the three or four people in basketball that is adept at stopping Giannis Antetokounmpo, Anthony Davis, you know, those elite bigs as best as you possibly can. But yeah, I get have that. Him I get at this that, age. But you I don't think kill, you're killing me, Jack. I don't think that they're going to trade. Tra- Bam is untouchable for the Heat, unless it's to get Giannis or somebody like that. Maybe, but he's a Pat Riley has said he's untouchable. The guy who's would be the centerpiece around a Harden deal would be Harrow added in with Kendrick Nunn and possibly like Precious too and some picks. I, I, I don't know if that would be enough personally. I mean, look, Houston has to deal Harden, and regardless, they're not going to get equal value for him, regardless. I you know think. So would you rather trade with the Nets who can give you Karras and Dinwiddie and Jared Allen and picks or the Heat who can give you Tyler Hero? And I think out of every trade package, Tyler Hero offers the more the most upside in the trade package. Is that is that say, not to cut you off, is that saying Ben Simmons is not on the table? Ben I know, Simmons, I, I, think, I think, is on the table. I think Ben Simmons is on the table for the Sixers too, but I'm just talking about like the Heat trade packages. I think they can make a better deal than the Nets. If Philly adds in Benson's, which, which is what they're going to have to do, I think, yeah, then that's a better deal. But for me, I put if Harden goes to Miami, Miami is more of a threat if Harden goes to Miami than if Harden goes to Philly. Harden on Miami is more of a threat than if Harden were to go I to agree. Philly. Because you have Bam, Jimmy, and Harden with Duncan Robinson, Goran Dragic still yeah. there. Yeah. It's, really, it's a really great team. Especially if Philly is giving up Ben Simmons in that deal. I, I want to say, because I've, I've read a few reports that the Houston is asking for Kyrie or Katie, and they're reportedly untouchable. I it's mean, I would take Kyrie personally. But, yeah, so those, that, I don't think the Nets deal is going to happen. I think it's more on the line is against Miami or Milwaukee or Philly. I don't think my, Milwaukee's going to end up making a deal. So it's really going to come down to Miami and Philly. I think the Heat value their culture 
culture more than anything. And I think with all these reports coming out about James Harden and that he's kind of a diva and that everything revolves around him, I think that's kind of pushing Miami back in a sense. Not Philly. I think it's pushing more Miami back in the sense of we don't want a guy like this in our locker room. I think we'll just rather ride with our guys instead of making a trade and giving them guys for somebody who's a bit of a diva. That's just what I'm reading from the reports. So I don't know. I do agree with Joel. I don't think they're going to win the championship with this roster. I think they're going to compete for a very long time, but I don't think essentially, I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to do what Boston's been doing for the past couple of years, making ECFs, making second rounds, be competitive. I think they're going to be compete, but I don't think they're going to get over the hump unless Bam and Tyler Harrell make this gigantic leap in a couple of years. And they're like superstars. Then you can see them making this, you know, a championship again and possibly winning it. But I, I don't think right now I would have them being a championship team. I think they're just a very great team in the East. Uh, we're actually, on, we're actually on the same page. Cause I was considering bam and a Harden deal. If you're telling me I can get Harden without giving up bam and without giving up Duncan oh, Robinson, I totally rethink it. that I, I would do but that. If I had to go bam. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, for this upcoming season, I know we just talked about the heat not competing for a championship, but I think they'll still be one of the best regular season teams, especially since they have more chemistry under their belt. Now with this core, I see them finishing with the second seed in the East I can see them as high as one. Like they have a high ceiling and I can see them as low as four in between there, high as one, low as four, but I see them finishing with the second seed in the East. Yeah. I have them at four actually, but that is the lowest I can see them going. Really. I have them anywhere from four to, like you said, one, I think the sky is the limit for them. A hardened deal is enticing, but after that article that came out today, if that's all true from Tim McMahon, that is a pretty damning article on James Harden. I don't think that Pat or Pat Riley would touch that unless they are dead set that James Harden will come in and follow Jimmy Butler, breakfast, lunch, dinner, on the court, off the court, whatever it may be, handcuff him and Jimmy Butler together and make them follow the same routine. It's the only way they will bring in James Harden. If they do that, though, they'll compete for a championship. But – Right now, as it stands, I have them finishing at four as high as one, but as low as four. I I, I do agree. I think if they get James Harden, that puts I feel like for me that puts them in the Milwaukee Bucks, Brooklyn Nets, Boston Celtics. I think that puts them a little bit. I think that puts them right on par with Brooklyn in terms of if both teams are healthy. I would put those two as the guys along with Milwaukee right under them in Boston too. If they get James Harden and gets to keep Bam in the process. But this team right now, I have them in the three to five range. I think five, I have them at five. The, it really just depends on everybody's health. But if healthy-wise, Nets and all that, I have them at five. But I think they can go up to three. So that's where I have them, three to five range.